A huge hello to all my dear fun beings. Hope you're all doing great. We are walking down the lane through the series of biostatistics. So today we are going to see graphical representation of data. So what is graphical representation of data? It is a visual form of a representation of statistical data. So let us see what are the types of graphical representation. Graphically, we can represent the frequency distribution in three different ways. And they are histogram, frequency polygon, and frequency curve. So let us see what they are one by one. But before seeing them, we will see what are the parts of a graph. This is a very important thing to learn. The horizontal axis is the x-axis and the vertical axis is the y-axis. So these four partitions are called as quadrants and the quadrants are always labeled in an anti-clockwise direction. So the first quadrant begins over here, then we have the second quadrant, third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Always we need to remember that the origin is the point where the graph begins. This is the region where the value is equal to 0, 0. And the first value represents the value on the x-axis, whereas the second value represents the value on the y-axis. This value on the x-axis is referred to as abscissa. So if we have a point over here, will have minus 3 as its abscissa and plus 4 as its ordinate. So ordinate is the value on the y-axis. We must always remember that the right side and the top always represent positive, whereas the left side and the bottom represent negative values. So here, the quadrant 1 always has positive values both in the x as well as y axis. So that is, both the abscissa and the ordinate are positive. In quadrant 2, the abscissa is negative. That is, x axis values are negative. And the y axis or ordinate values are positive. The quadrant 3 has double negatives. That is, both the x as well as the y-axis values are negative and the quadrant 4 has a positive x-axis value whereas a negative y-axis value. So let us move ahead to see what is a histogram. A histogram is similar to a bar diagram but here both the lengths and the widths of the bars are important. This makes the histogram two-dimensional. But remember that a bar diagram is always one-dimensional. And based on the type of class intervals, histogram are of two types, one having equal class intervals and the other having unequal class intervals. So let us see these two with the help of an example. The first example includes equal class intervals. So the number of students in each class in every batch from 2010 to 2020 is given below. We need to draw a histogram for this data. All of these class intervals are equal. That is 2010 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 13 and so on. All of these have the difference of just one year between them. So let us see how to draw the histogram. First, we need to mark the x-axis and the y-axis. So over here, I'm marking the x-axis and the y-axis. And then we need to label all the points on the x and the y-axis. We can also label these points on the x-axis as 2010 over here, 2011 over here, 2012 over here, 2013 over here, and so on up till 2020 over here. Always remember the histograms are mostly in the shape of a mountain. If not an equal mountain, at least sometime they will be like this. So a very few exceptions are also there for this kind of shape. 
but mostly it will be like this. Moving ahead for unequal class intervals. For unequal class intervals, we can see that the class over here are given as 0 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to 24, whereas it should have been 12 to 18 and 18 to 24, but it's given as 12 to 24 and 24 to 30 and 30 to 36. So you can see here, this one class does not have the class interval equal to the other classes. For this, we need to draw an adjustment table. So here, in this adjustment table, we have taken the same table from the question and added two more columns to it. The first one is the adjustment and the second one is the frequency. So adjustment here is taken as the class interval, which is 6, is equal to 1. 1 here represents the bar and 6 here represents the class interval. That is 6 minus 0 is 6, 12 minus 6 is 6. So over that, we have taken 6 as the class interval. Now, 12 to 24 has two classes in it because the class interval here is 24 minus 12 that is equal to 12 rather than 6. So what we do here is we need to do an adjustment. For all of this, the bar size is 1 except 12 to 24. Here, the bar size is 2. We need to draw two bars. But we cannot draw both of these bars at the height of 8. That will be a wrong representation. And hence, we divide this 8 equally into 2, that is 4. So each bar will be of the size 4. Let us see how we have drawn this. So here, similar way, like we have drawn the equal class interval histogram, we need to mark the x-axis and the y-axis. And we need to mark all the points on the x-axis. So again, we can mark it as 0, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. And the main thing that we need to note here is that the width of this bar. Like I said before, both the width and the height are important in an histogram. So here, this width represents the difference in the class interval. That is the reason a histogram is two-dimensional. Now moving ahead, let us see the next one, which is frequency polygon. So frequency polygon is similar to a histogram where the frequencies are represented on the vertical axis and the variables on the horizontal axis. And how we need to draw this is we need to place a midpoint of each class and connect these dots to draw a frequency polygon. Let us see an example. The number of grains per spike and the number of plants are given. So let us see how to draw a frequency polygon. So this is a frequency polygon. We can see that the midpoints between 20 to 22, that is 21. So this point is 21, this is 23, this is 25, this is 27 and this is 29. Similarly, like I said before, we can mark this as 20 this as 22 and so on. So all these points are connected to draw the frequency polygon. And after doing that, we extrapolate the line to the x-axis to complete the polygon. Now let us go ahead to the frequency curve. So a frequency curve is a freehand drawing similar to the frequency polygon. And this helps us to avoid accidental variations. So let us see an example. The same example can be taken here also. But this is the frequency curve. The frequency polygon has straight lines, whereas a frequency curve is hand drawn. And here you can see I have labeled the x axis like I had told you all this while. So the point over here is 20 and the point between these two, this is 21, this is 23, this is 25, somewhere over here, and this is uh, 27, and this is 29. So connecting all of these through her freehand drawing, we get the frequency curve. Now, let us move ahead and see the significance of graphical representation. Graphical representation are the simplest method of presenting data. 
they are attractive impressive and interesting and they make comparison very easy they help us in ascertaining certain statistical methods and they save time and labor but they also have certain limitations let us see what they are the actual values are not known and complete accuracy is not possible it cannot be quoted in support of some statements this is quoted so it cannot be quoted in support of some statements and only a few characteristics can be depicted so these all lead to misleading interpretations of the data thanks a lot for watching guys hope you really like this video and if you did don't forget to hit the like button below and show some love also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn it gray and click the bell icon next to it to be the first one to get your concept right Let's meet up in another beautiful video until then bye bye